In episode 4 of The Fall of the House of Usher, which was titled The Black Cat, which is based on a dark story about a man who tortured and later killed his own cat, a decision that will haunt him forever. As Leo adopts a black cat who soon brings evil and a mysterious woman into his home, while Roderick struggles with terrifying hallucinations. As we open the episode with Leo on the hunt for a replacement of his boyfriend's cat, and after his fifth stop, he arrives to a location and finds Verna, who's there to help. As she shows him every cat that doesn't fit the description of the the cat that he's looking for, he comes across a black cat that looks exactly like the one that was killed. But unfortunately, it's not available. But we know no or not available are words that don't fit in the Usher's vocabulary. So Leo decides to offer to buy every cat and to give away and to provide upgrades to the facility. And this actually works as she gives him the cat, but it is important to note that he took a picture of her holding that cat and I believe this photo is something that Roderick or Madeline will find and they'll start to realize that this is the same woman that happens to be the last person their kids see before they die. As Leo takes the cat home and immediately things start off bad as the cat cuts him and runs off just as he gets the news that his sister just recently died. The top at hand is denial. This is a conversation that Roderick and Dupin have about how well it works for members of his family, including himself. In this scene, there are two things that stood out to me. Number one, Roderick is constantly getting these messages on his phone. He claims that it's his granddaughter, Lenore, which if you look closely enough, you can see that it is her name that pops up on his phone. But the question is, is that really her? Is she in danger? Why isn't he answering her phone calls? And then the number two thing that stood out to me in this scene, something makes a noise in the basement and Roderick claims that it's Madeline, but the question is, is that really her? And if it is her, did he end up finding out that she's the informant and he tied her up, or maybe even worse, maybe he killed his own sister? I'm very excited to see how this particular scene plays out. As a family meeting is called, but this time around has three less Usher members in attendance, as Leo is shocked and blames Vic, Vic blames their dad for the bounty that he created, all while Fred has a wife in the ICU, and Tam, she's only concerned about her product launch. As we can see, priorities and emotions are all over the place with this family. As Roderick tells all the kids in the room to toe the line, time to build a wall, and to do what's told of them, no questions asked. A line we'll hear a little bit later in this very episode, as Leo has had enough and he won't speak on the family's behalf to the media as he was told, and even threatens his dad to remove him from the will and he walks away. Meanwhile, Pim shows footage of the security guard that Camille spoke to before she died. Even though they couldn't make out who this was, they are starting to believe that this is the same person that might have been involved in Perry's death. As Leo is having a meltdown of what to wear for two funerals, his boyfriend is yet to see this new cat, but suddenly it pops out at Leo, but his boyfriend just missed it. Now, it was at this point that I started to realize, oh, maybe this cat isn't alive, maybe it's actually the same cat that died and it's like an evil spirit, it's like a mad, crazy trick that Vera's playing on him where Leo can only see the cat and no one else. Now, even though the Usher family has some deaths that just recently took place, they still have a trial to attend. As Pim is late, but he informs the judge that his lateness was due to the recent death of Camille as they delay this trial a few more days. As Roderick talks to Vic in private to see, one, if she's the informant, but two, what was Camille doing looking around in her lab? As he hints that he might be calling it quits with this project, Vic tells him that they're ready to do human trials, which pulls him back into the fold. And yet again, he mentions how important her work is to getting things figured out. As my predictions that I talked about in my previous videos are proven to be true in this episode a little bit later. As Pim eventually gets a better version of the video of who the security guard was and sends it to Madeline and Roderick, and you can tell the look on their face shows they recognize who this person was, as Madeline takes a detour to what appears to be the same bar her and Roderick first met Vera at, as it's now been shut down, but there's a raven present there looking to directly at her. I'm very curious to know why Madeline went to the bar if this is indeed that same bar that they met Vera with back in 1980, but I'm starting to think also that maybe Vera had some type of deal with Madeline that Roderick wasn't aware of. So we get a quick scene of Roderick looking at that same stone wall that we saw back in the quick flashes of episode one as he starts to hear his jingles behind the wall, which might point at that gesture that he saw at the end of episode one. As trust is the topic at hand in this following scene, we see Pam signing her life away and putting all her trust in Vic's hands and in this future-proof world without pain heart device as her surgery is set for later in the week, which to me perfectly lines up to when we can expect to see Vic scheduled to die. As Leo can't sleep and he has Jules help him out with this, he notices the pet cemetery cat staring at him from the distance as he discovers the first dead animal under his pillow, one of many he'll find throughout this episode. 
Displacement. This is yet another topic covered in the conversation between Dupin and Roderick as they talk about this being another mechanism used by the Usher family. Now, Roderick talks about how him and Leo shared a lot in common when it came to how they handle their emotions, and out of nowhere, Leo's body falls from the ceiling onto the floor, obviously freaking out Roderick, but also freaking me out and Dupin at the same time as they go into the first day they met and how Roderick saw the world differently after this day. Cut to that day where Dupin was looking into his boss Rufus and some fraud going on as Annabelle invites him in he shows Roderick all of his signatures all over these believed to be forged paperwork to consent for his patients. Annabelle is certain and frankly quite knows that those weren't her husband's signatures but Rod is surprised but he doesn't show his cards because he doesn't want to compromise his position at work as it appears he's taking advice from his sister on playing the long game and striking when it's the proper time to do so. Now this might have been stepping over the line but I love the monologue given by Dupin when Rod pretends to not know how his signatures ended up on those pages and basically gives him this important message about doing the right thing. Now, I can understand now why Rod would consider this to be a very important day to him because in all truth and honesty, he should have quit that job as soon as he saw these forged signatures. Cut to the scene where Rod confronts his boss about these signatures and it's pretty much implied and confirmed that those were fake signatures as Rufus switches the tone in the room and questions if Rod is a part of the team and he recites the same exact speech that we saw earlier in this episode when Roderick was given to his children about stepping up and being on one side and being one unit. It is clear as day now that Roderick shaped his whole business persona from his boss. Rod is just ignoring all the signs to leave this company as Rufus says that he's the Willy Wonka of the situation and that he will give Rod a golden ticket if he sticks around. Now for a brief second here we see Annabelle and Matt Madeline seemed to be on the same page of how Rod should handle the situation as Annabelle suggests that he quits his job but he puts it well if I quit I'm going to probably be blacklisted from any other positions because of how powerful his boss is but then this is where Madeline steps in and she suggests that her brother acknowledges the situation remember the situation but continue to play the game but then call Dupin as soon as possible become best friends with Dupin and play nice with him eventually he's going to catch Rufus ready handed in the act and that will be the opportunity for Rod to claim their birthright for their father's company. I love the back and forth and the duality between kind of that good angel, bad angel when we see these scenes between Roderick's wife and his sister who seems to be more on the sinister and more kind of take the bad root side and not only did these two scenes show me that Rod did take a lot from his boss as far as his persona and how he treats his company, how he treats his employees, but he also learned a lot from his sister Madeline. Now we see Fred pays his brother a visit because he needs drugs for everything going on with his wife, but also in this episode, Pim gives him the burner phone that Perry gave her, which causes him to start to think that maybe she was involved in some things that he wasn't aware of. But yet again, this pet cemetery crazy sadistic cat comes out of nowhere and scratches him, but this time it scratches him in the eye. And yet again, it appears that Fred doesn't see the cat, and the only one that sees him is Leo, as Fred takes the coke and hopes that it's going to help him out. As the show was setting up Tam's inevitable demise, she watches her husband husband on TV during his show and she notices that Candy is there. Now I love how the show has been putting Verna in front of them the whole time but no one has yet to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. As Tam confronts her husband about this later in the episode, meanwhile Leo continues to find dead animals all over his apartment which leads him to call him Verna for help. As the cat is now on the walls, Verna talks about how cats are predators and how effective they are as hunters as the cat attacks him and they have this bit of a scuffle which leads to the cat getting his eye ripped out as we see Verna's eye is now missing and like she did with the monkey she's now taking the form of this cat and Leo is now the prey. As he grabs his Thor hammer sent from Thor himself as he starts to break down the walls he grabs a hold of the cat and it's a full out battle. Meanwhile we see Fred is taking those drugs and decides to remove a piece of equipment from his wife's fingers in hopes that it's going to unlock the phone but has no luck in doing so so he decides to take it a step further and takes off her bandages instead and it still doesn't work with her face unlocking because hey she doesn't have a face 
I'm very curious to see where this plot lands and what is he going to find on the phone? Is it going to be photos of her maybe kissing someone or maybe thinking that Perry and her had an affair? Very intrigued to see where this storyline goes. Now, like I mentioned in my previous video, we have this scene here where Juno is wanting to take a break from the drug linadone, but Roderick tells her that no, you don't need to do this because she's his perfect proof that it works. Again, where I'm at right now is I think that he's not with her because he loves her. I mean, he might like her, but I don't think he loves her, but I think he married her for he can keep eyes on her, keep tabs on her, study her progress with his drugs to see if there is a side effect, but also, as we'll later learn in this episode, he probably wants to use the drug for he can use for himself because as we find out later, he's dying. But the important thing to also point out in this scene is he gets his first vision of his dead son, Perry, right behind her as he is shocked and it scares the hell out of him. As this leads to Madeline arriving, and it is confirmed in this very scene, as I talked about in my previous videos, that Rod is indeed sick. He actually suffers from the same sickness that his mother had, but at this point, it's pretty advanced. As is also said in this scene, that all the different various projects from the Linodone to Vic's project had all been for him to actually use, and this is the first time as adults for me that we get to see these two characters being vulnerable in the scene. Now we end the episode with Jules finally arriving home and seeing most of the walls have been torn down in the apartment and the apartment is basically destroyed as is Leo Sanity as he finally sees well the cat never existed as it appears out of nowhere on the balcony edge as Leo runs towards it he falls off the balcony and lands face first on the concrete and he's dead. Now we know in the next episode next Next in line to die is Vic. Now this episode, The Black Cat, was based on an Edgar Allan Poe story, and it basically followed the story of an unnamed character who had a strong affection for pets, but eventually it turned to him abusing them. As his favorite black cat bites him one night, and the narrator decides to punish the cat by pulling one of his eyes out and eventually hanging it on a tree. Now this led to his house inevitably burning down, but on one of the walls, there was this burned outline of that same cat hanging from a noose. Now later, the character replaces the cat with another cat that looked very similar to his but soon he develops a hatred for this cat now long story short this particular character end up getting the new cat tried to kill his cat but end up killing his wife instead he end up finding the cat and also his wife behind a wall with led to the police arrest of him so you can see that there are some nods and some similarities in this episode as has the other episodes have been but the thing that kind of was off with me in this episode was the central theme of the character being compared to leo didn't work for me Yes, he may have lied and cheated and took a lot of drugs and sold drugs, but he wasn't an evil guy like some of his other siblings. Going back to Leo, I guess one can say he maybe was aware of his family's wrongdoings in the company. He didn't say anything, but that leads me into just my overall thoughts of this episode. I'll be honest, it's probably my least favorite. I still enjoyed it because I liked the actor. I liked the character Leo. It didn't focus on Leo as much as the other central characters did in their previous episodes like to me the side plot seemed to be more of the focus in this episode more so than it being a leo driven episode again i like the performance this is a fine episode but it's just my least favorite out of the four so far but again narratively i get the idea that all these kids were going to die regardless on if they were good or bad or whatnot but to me his death this seems so kind of mean and cruel and he was tortured throughout the episode which to me was kind of uncalled for because again i don't think he was was as bad as his other siblings but what this all kind of shakes down to again i'm loving this show so far but one of my issues is i feel like some of the characters and leo being an example of this they're kind of lacking the development there and it kind of feels a little bit underwhelming the final questions i had after watching this episode now we know roderick is indeed sick but like i had predicted do you all believe that he actually loves juno or if he's just using her to test a drug also will annabelle inevitably leave roderick because of his sister or because of his job but going back to Roderick was his sickness bound to happen anyway or does it have something to do with his relationship with Verna as the fall of the house of usher episode four is in the books a solid episode but again my least favorite but i'm very excited to see what's going to happen next thank you all for watching this breakdown consider hitting the like button if you all enjoy my breakdown and recap share this video but also share your thoughts and theories and predictions on this episode in the comments below make sure to click the video on the screen now or in the link in the description of this video to see my next breakdown of episode five consider subscribing to the channel you all are awesome hope you're staying safe and i'll catch you all on the next video.